into a battle fury. You can show up the fights early. Uh, I think Alliance is draft, I gotta be honest. I like T1s. I, I... Into the Tide Hunter lane, who's a hero who is very adept at being able to uh, deal with Wraith King and his skeletons and uh, the small instances of damage. Kraken Shell just deals yeah, yeah. with all of that. Doing a lot of research into damage block too. I was hoping we saw Spectre into Tide today. Oh, Zephyr, that's it. First Blood. Just slowed down too much by the Arctic Bird, and now Cuckoo's gonna find most of his mana is gonna be burned away as uh, Nico Baby takes the opportunity. Oh, important for T1's victory or loss. Yep, my two favorite heroes against AM are Slaughter and Axe for this reason, because you always get the disable. You don't have to worry about yeah. counter spell. You know it's guaranteed gonna land. And I love this Nico Baby. Zephyr, the early dead again. So good. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, this is the way to play AM nowadays, I think. If you're not going Orb of Corrosion, unless you just have a really bad lane matchup, you can't actually win as Annie Mage. Like, just get an Orb of Corrosion, run people down. Supports are free all the time. Cuckoo is going to be. Four I wonder what. Uh, I wonder what the spell block interactions are. If you are not the one being doomed, but you're soulbound as uh, Cuckoo's. Is Cuckoo actually dead here? They're gonna take some time, but Nico Baby's having a hard time actually putting damage onto this axe, especially since he's completely out of mana. So he's just kind of running around with his Vanguard, challenging anybody who wants to fight him. Finally, they do get another round oh, of God. Earth Spike. Still, though, they're gonna have to keep on poking at him from a distance. Otherwise, this madman will kill somebody. As uh, Orb Corrosion a couple times, and there it is. Finally, they get the kill. Cuckoo. Cool. And uh, the one danger I heard Lacoste mention, I, I do like the double squishy support style. I think that this is just sort of because we've developed into almost a heal tank meta. You know, look at all the strength heroes in this game. We've got five on the core rolls. Grimstroke, I mean, Zephyr's just not having a great time. But when you run so many strength heroes as cores, it's a lot easier to get away with double range support. But the trouble is, if you're a hero like Grimstroke and you fall behind, it's very tough to like find a place back into the game. Like, where is he supposed right. to go? I would say maybe bottom, try and finish a kill on S4. They might not S4 need him. S4 is uh, very Odd. far forward with no... It, it's a nice place to be. Wraith King will likely move to the jungle, already has. This is going to grow for them. Up. They're going to go for the Doom on S4. The first move by T1's cores. And it is going to be a successful gank. Meanwhile, farther up the river as we're going to watch Carl die here. They're going to try and chase down Zephyr. Zephyr is going to be pulled back into the Shockwave. Pretty easy kill for Alliance as uh, they tried to invade the triangle a little bit while S4 was going down in bottom lane. Yeah, so it's playing more of a farming style, but he's the one who's going to have to try and, and make some moves here. And coming behind Cuckoo. Trying to trap him Shockwave. down, but he's at half health with no mana. So it's, again, really hard for this AM to actually do damage. They're going to catch up the limp here. The Ice Blast is going to spot him out, but a skewer away will get him out of range. But 23 Savage is there with the stun RP immediately being used. But he may still burn out. Meanwhile, behind, there's Chaos. The Doom Edge get the call on to Nico, baby. They, can they fear him down? I don't think so. They just do not have the damage. So uh, Carl's just going to run down FNG, it looks like, instead. Ultimately, it's going to be a support for support trade-off, but uh, RP did have to be used to save Limp's life. It, that's most unfortunate. It's the max in power build. Um, power. The bottom lane. Nico Baby's not expecting an invis doom. That's just unfair. That's huge. And now he's got a blink dagger, so Carl is way ahead of the pack when it comes to net worth, though he's not so far ahead of Coop. Roll in general is just so tough to find someone who can be, above all else, consistent. And Carl's been able to do so in a variety of different styles as well. Like the mid Doom, this is a specialty hero. And when I think of other players, like say Iceberg is an example, who played it in Eastern Europe, he, he had like three or four heroes. You're like, okay, he's very good on these. I think Carl's list is closer to 20. Yeah, no, he's certainly uh, been stellar. 4T1 is they're going to try and go for an advantage in the triangle. They pick up a kill on Onskin, but they're going to run into the Ravage, into the Skewer-like pins. They're all going to fall here as Cuckoo is going to be the last one left alive, but he's got nowhere to run to. 
three down from a big move from Alliance. Nicely played by S4, just scooping up. Somebody said that it's a bad idea. Yeah, and just being disruptive. Oh, hang on, as I say, maybe a fight. 23 Savage is gonna be picked. And they're going to burn away his mana. He's got eight stick charges, but he's not going to be able to get it off double ultimates. We'll put him down before he gets the chance to save his own life. Yeah, a really nice smoke from Alliance. You saw a 23 Savage be getting involved. You can't give away free towers, but now T1, they'll make the move. Skewering on back. Cuckoo getting ripped apart by all this damage. Jeez. That was a little bit more than I expected, but the empowered mag hitting for over 200 damage a hit with a gush as well. They're gonna be able to get the soul behind Double Doom, the Ice Blast out as well. That's gonna be two kills instantly for T1. Now the other two, Lemp and FNG, were able to get back here. So they may still have a chance to defend this tower if T1 try and pressure it. You have a BKB now up for the Doom. Cuckoo's gonna TP in here, but actually cancels it. As they backed away, Alliance backed away, so he's just like, okay, I'm just gonna push out mid, try and force them to rotate over T1. Kind of setting up here, are gonna be able to go for S4. Now S4 does have the sounds on, the Ice Blast is coming in as well. Limp, no, he missed the RP. He didn't get off the blink beforehand. S4 is gonna be burned out here. No Roche threat, and because there's no tier ones, you can't really make a play for Roche. You need to make a play for kills, so you go for it. Savage. 23 Savage has the shard, so he is not going to die here right away. But on his second life, he may come back and just instantly die again. He will. There is nothing they can do about that. There's just too many heroes on top of the carry of T1. Now, not only is the Wraith King dead, but Reincarnation is on cooldown. T1 are not going to go and let this Roshan happen no. for free. Smoke breaks. Cuckoo, look at his positioning the DD. on scan. They can get this DD. Oh, oh the stomp coming oh. in. The two-man soul bite with the doom and the ink swell. Just beautiful stuff from T1. And the fight is seemingly already over as the two cores are dead. As for, he tried to go for the kill on the white man. Winter's Curse does actually hold them in place and kills the Ancient Apparition finally. Maybe they can get out of here, but they're not going to win this fight without their two damage dealers. Hey, okay, Cold Embrace after Cold Embrace is saving him. Carl's done with that nonsense, though. He chases away the Winter Wyvern while his other two allies focus on the S4 Tidehunter. Third core down, and Alliance lose control of the pit. Camp the high ground, wait, and Alliance just wander into their own demise. Really nice job. Hanskin did a cool play at the end there. He mana drained Carl, preventing the second Scorched Earth and a potential War Stomp, so that actually saved both supports' lives. But either way, huge win for T1. And you're going to be content to just chill now, wait for Doom to come back up. You got BKB on Wraith King soon. He's going to need that, or he's going to die twice in a row. Pretty much all game. Reincarnation is back up again, but 23 Savage is being patient. Lent managed to find a nice skewer back onto two of them, unable to get out the RP, but he does so now. That is going to be both of them dying. Oh, Cuckoo does manage to get off his BKB with the call with Inkswell as well. The double soul bind, the silence stacking up, and they are both dead. Now FNG chased down by Carl as well. Once again, T1 just responding to Alliance and out initiating them. I thought this time around a nice two man RP, but damn, Cuckoo survives through just long enough to get off his BKB, and now he's going to be able to catch 23 Savage as well. The stun follow-up, the silence put onto him. That is going to potentially be a team life as long as they've got enough stuns, and they do. All right. Yeah, hit him with the tip and pick Tide into Doom. Yeah. And back then, we knew that AM versus Wraith King was good, as they're going to be able to find uh, the Winter Wyvern. But back then, uh, Wraith King didn't have talents or shard. And because they just don't have the space on the map for Nico Baby to really confidently stretch his legs. But I don't know. Oh, they basically the Oh again. no, S4. That's a thousand damage crit. Ice Blast as well. BKB being used just to make sure they do get this kind of free kill that was available. Very unfortunate. FNG, like the whole support duo just can't play dota into this triple bkb and they picked him up quite early for all three heroes they had him before 25. wyvern big team fight that uh, they've got three different heroes with just the massive team fight changing abilities they've got ravage rp and winner's curse 
but it feels like even if they get off the dream scenario at this point against the three strength cores uh, and not having any percentage based damage they're gonna have a very hard time actually winning that team fight even if they do hit the, the, the biggest stunning ultimates so they need a miracle Carl has Arcaner and he really wants to get in Oh, and the smoke out from Alliance, but they're going to run right into 23 Savage. The Zephyr just wants to they're ready. They just want a Soulbind. They're going to jump him right oh, after the Skewer immediately. The Soulbind, the Double Tomb. It just keeps happening. They're so good at it. They're so perfect it. at these combinations. And now they're going to be able to get the call onto FNG as well. So Winner's Curse already thrown out, but it doesn't do anything. Grimstroke actually using Dark his Inkus. There goes the Dark Portrait. He silenced up. He's Inkswelled. And now he's going to be called as well. Oh, my God. They didn't even need the Doom, yeah. and it showed. They just swamped Alliance with uh, straight up Soulbind and Beauty. Beautiful blink initiation. Just absolutely perfect stuff from T2.